What is up everyone? Today I've got something really cool to show you guys. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to make a quick apology for the fan. It is boiling hot today, so really sorry if it blows into the microphone and makes a load of noise in the video. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, but anyway, check this out guys. It is Sunday, August 3rd, I believe, and we've just got back from the car boot sale. And we haven't been in a long time, a very long time. I don't think we've been since Arlo's been born. Um, so that shows how long ago we last went because he's going to be one in September next month. Um, so yeah, pretty crazy. And today, um, someone was looking out for me because I have found something incredible. Let me just pull the cover off here and all of this will become clear. This is a Sony SLC6 Betamax recorder from 1982 and just for a bit of perspective here's my hand look at the size of this complete monster it is huge for those of you who are curious first of all the first spec of the machine it weighs 14.5 kilos which is over 30 pounds I think um, just to crazy crazy weight I carried it all the way back to the car it is a mammoth piece of equipment um, so yeah this is a Betamax recorder and the reason that this is such a special find is because for years I was after a Betamax recorder and uh, as you guys know my parents found one for me my dad found one um, in a car boot sale a good few years ago now and he gifted it to me for my birthday and uh, that is a gorgeous machine. I had it fully restored. I've got it downstairs. I use it. It is a lovely Sanyo VTC uh, 6500. A really nice machine. Um, but I've never, fa I've never found one out in the wild myself. And it took him a long time to find one. And uh, this was just sitting on the floor today and it was just staring up at me. And um, it was really funny, the people I bought it off on the stall, they were like, Betamax, that was way before your time. Oh, no, no, sorry. She said, Betamax, that was a bit before your time. I was like, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, they must have thought, what the heck is this really young person doing buying one of these? Anyway, uh, the guy asked 30 quid for it. It was sat on the floor. I asked him if it worked. He said it all powers on and lights up but he doesn't have a tape so he can't try it this probably won't work folks it is super rare to find a working one out in the wild i mean you look on ebay they're all spares or repairs unless they've been professionally restored um i got mine restored by a fantastically fantastically talented um video recorder engineer service repair engineer and he uh, used to work for Sanyo, I believe, and he did a wonderful, wonderful job on my VTC 6500. That machine is flawless. Um, although it has developed a fault as of late, I do have to send it back to him for another service, but you expect to do that with these older machines. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, unless they've been restored by uh, someone who really knows what they're doing, it's unlikely to find one out in the wild that works. Even if it does work, when once you fire it up, it's probably not going to run for that long because all of the belts are, are worn and stretched and this that and the other You've got dirty video heads whatever may be the problem and um, there are far more complex things that can go wrong than that but yeah um we're not dwelling on the fact that it works or not we're, we're just really excited that we found um that we found a, a Betamax. it's just crazy it was just there on the floor so anyway he asked 30 quid for it and i offered him 20 quid and we settled on 25 nice little deal uh, a complete steal for one of these even if it doesn't work you can flog them on ebay for more than that in spares or repairs condition but if it works then you can flog them for way more i don't have a clue what i'm gonna do with this no idea it is massive it is probably about a third higher than my 6500 my 6500 probably comes up to this mark here this almost looks like one of those industrial um professional grade video recorders but it's not it's uh, purely a consumer machine um, even though it does have that quite beefy industrial look to it um, this was uh, released in 1982 and this one is actually the mark ii now i did a little bit of research because i don't have a, an amazing catalog of every betamax machine in my head with all of their dates so i'd hire <laughs> before you get really impressed i have looked this up so they simultaneously released the mark one and the mark ii there's a few little differences. Uh, firstly, the button arrangement is different on the front on the Mark 1. Um, it's kind of like in a T shape. There's a couple of buttons here and I'll put a picture up on the screen. And also it's silver in color. This one is a really kind of 
dull grey. It's quite an interesting colour. It's very, very dominating. You know, it sits here. It's quite striking. Not striking in a this stands out kind of way, but striking in a you look at it and you're like, yeah, it kind of it really takes the eye. It draws the eye. Um, it's an interesting colour. It's and I think it's because it's so big as well. It kind of amplifies that. Um, so yeah, Mark 1 and Mark 2. There was also a version of this made with stereo, which is really cool. Um, and it also had some features, apparently, according to the website I was reading, had some features um, whereby if you were recording a program, they'd have a different audio track on the right and the left, maybe a different language or description or whatever, so you could toggle between the two on supported broadcasts and record whichever one you wanted onto your tape. I thought that was really cool. Um, so yeah, this one doesn't have stereo. This is a mono one, uh, as is my other machine. It would be a dream of mine one day to own a fully functioning uh, stereo or better still, a, a hi-fi Betamax um, for beta hi-fi. I'd love to hear it in person, especially with my own machine. Oh, I've already rambled for ages, so let's try and get down to business. Let's take a look at the front of this machine. Um, this is a fairly basic machine with your basic features, just everything you'd kind of need for a nice home VCR at the time. So let's take a look at what we've got. We have got our main on button. This is our power on or standby button. Uh, we've got a timer record button, which is another mechanical button. Um, down here, we've got our display, of course. It'd be interesting to see if the display still works nicely. There's a record light here, which I assume is backlit with a nice little lamp. Um, so when it's recording, that's lit up red. Uh, here we have some controls for the timer. And there's one control in here that has a little screw and I assume it came with a tiny little screwdriver so that you could alter this pot. Um, so yeah, we got the record button, which is a nice button because you can't just press it. You have to pull it to the side and press it, which is really quite cool. Although you just, yeah, you pretty much just pull it to the side actually, and then it presses. Uh, up here, you've got the standard channel buttons. So you can uh, tune in eight different channels to whatever channels you want and the tuning for those is above very very standard affair for um, this sort of machine back in the day very similar setup on my other machine um, and then down below we've got this little underneath section um, we have a big tracking dial here very similar to my other machine once again very common at this time to have a massive manual tracking rotary control on the front uh, and then we've got some input and output we've got a remote input here. This machine came with a wired remote. Unfortunately, this didn't come with it. You know, it's probably long gone. Um, as far as what I've seen online, it's a three button remote and it was just on the transition, I guess. Um, the higher end machines at the time had infrared remotes. This was a lower end machine, so it had a wired remote, but apparently, optionally, there was an infrared remote available. So you could plug an infrared dongle into this socket and then ha you could use an infrared remote, which is really cool. We've got some other connectors along here. Uh, we've obviously got audio and video in and a microphone in for recording straight from a camera at the front or recording from somewhere else. There, there may not be inputs on the back actually. These are probably the only inputs. So if you're recording from another machine or whatever you were doing, then you'd probably use these. Uh, I'm not gonna spin the machine round. I'll try and find a rear shot um, online rather than moving this because as I say, 15 kilos weighs a ton. Uh, coming up, we've just got our standard transport controls. These are massive, big, beefy buttons, but they are digital um, as you can hear. You know they're not mechanical in any way. Uh, when I first saw them, I thought their size they'd be they'd like could junk, but that's not the case. So we just got just got our standard uh, rewind, stop, eject, play, fast forward, and a pause slash freeze. Up here we have got a mechanical timer for the tape. So the display over here is purely reserved for the timer and stuff. I should imagine uh, the tape counter itself is uh, on this little doodad. And then, of course, we have the slot for the cassette. And it's got a really nice kind of split door in the middle. My Sanyo machine has got just a single door. Nice metal door, though. Uh, as I think probably... Oh, is this metal? No, I think this is plastic. I believe my one downstairs is metal. Um, but everything about these Betamax machines just feels generally high quality. Even, uh, even this lower end model, it's built like an absolute tank. Um, not to the not to the point where it's going to work when I fire it up, probably. But still, it'll be interesting to see. Um, so I've talked for enough, I think. What I'm going to do now is get a little screen up here and find some video cables, plug it all in, and just see if it fires up because. I am, I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. I've dug out a couple of um, tapes 
that I purchased from eBay a while ago. I didn't want to try any pre-recorded tapes from my collection because the problem is with collecting for this format, um, the films are generally quite expensive. You can find good deals on auctions. So if you just keep an eye on auctions and get your bids in and you, and yeah, you can find tapes for, for a good, for a good price. But the thing is a good price is like four or five quid. So if you spend four or five quid multiple times, it still becomes quite an expensive hobby. And then if you put it in an unknown machine and it chews up your tape or you lose your tape inside to the powers of the, you know, mangled internal mechanism, uh, then it is quite a shame even if it was a cheaper tape. And the thing is with collecting, I don't buy tapes that I don't want. So every single tape in my collection is a tape that I don't want destroyed. Um, it's not like I can just go and quickly grab a really rubbish VHS tape from the 90s or something. Uh, all of my Betamax tapes are, are nice tapes. So um, I've got these recorded from the TV tapes and uh, they are Sony tapes so I'd rather they weren't destroyed but um, we can give them a go anyway and uh, they probably won't get destroyed anyway, probably just won't work. So yeah, screen cables, get on with it. So unfortunately the only BNC cable that I appear to have to hand is one that has SCART on the other end. So what I'm going to do is uh, jump quickly through this. Um, SCART adapter splitter thingamajig and just use uh, an RCA cable to go from the composite output to my monitor and before you all get really excited um, <laughs> I can just see the comments now oh Tom you didn't tell us that you bought a PVM oh my god uh, it's not it is a very very basic and very generic CRT from the early noughties um, that was used for CCTV and as you can see there is some burning of a building or some windows or something. I've got two of them. I've got another one just under there. One's working, one isn't um, and they're very basic low quality um, monitors but great for testing and great for previewing. That's why I bought one because when I eventually put my shelf here hoping to have a CRT up on there and I'll use one of these. It's just good for testing this sort of thing, exactly this sort of thing. And it's nice because it's just got standard cat lead input, there's no fuss, um, it's got S video and composite input and BNC, so it's really, really great, handy. Oh, and it's got a little speaker as well, tiny little speaker, so it's got audio in it, which is even handier. So, fantastic. I'm gonna plug all this stuff in. Well, this just got a whole lot more complicated. This has only BNC and S video in, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay, it kind of tricks you there. It says video in out, but it's that's the audio for the two separate inputs. So I'm gonna have to do some additional jiggery pokery with my cabling and oh yeah, I'll figure it out. All right guys, I have plugged it all in and first thing I notice is we've got nice bright display uh, on the clock, which is fantastic. So um, I've managed to Frankenstein a setup to get video and audio to this monitor via S video. Uh, so let's flip the monitor around and see what happens. Oh man, can you tell that I was not expecting to find a Betamax recorder today? <laughs> Talk about underprepared. Anyway, we are going to quite simply fire up the monitor. We're going to go on S video and wait for a bit of action from that. Excellent. S video, no input. Turn that on. You should be getting input. Should be getting input. Maybe when I put a tape in. Okay. Yeah, when I put a tape in. So, ooh, let's go. Nerves. It's taking the tape. Oh! Oh! Not good. Okay. Whew. That noise is not good. What? It's doing something. Now, is this the fault of my... my crud setup here? Um, because... I think it's playing. I think it's my really, really cruddy setup that's not passing video. It's all plugged in. Don't know if that's gonna work, see? That's the thing. Oh, here we go. Whew. Bit of, bit of tracking. 
Hey, do we have any sound? Let's have a look at volume. Holy, I was not expecting to even get this far, guys. Now, of course, it's not perfect, obviously. Seems to be something, you know, slipping or something amiss in there. But my God, I don't even care. It works. It's spinning a tape. And it's fast forwarding. It's doing its it's doing its thing. And there's a little bit of audio, you know, nothing to write home about, but it works. Look at that. Look at that. A bit more fast forwarding. Should you do a bit of Beauty, absolute beauty. Rewind too. Pause. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, folks. Okay, so we're going to do a risky move. We're going to eject the tape. And it may never work again now um, when I do this because it could, that could be its one hit wonder. It may not load a second tape, but we will see. That was a flipping good sign. Let's try another tape. Let's get another tape in there. Fair bit of noise coming through. Don't know if that's the machine or it doesn't matter because it stops when the tape is playing. Made that noise last time and really scared me. playing another tape, at least playing it to a certain extent. Now I would guess that this is playing in the wrong speed, or maybe not. Okay, let's take that out. You know what? We're going to risk a nice pre recorded film. We're going to risk this. I'm going to change my camera battery. Okay, fresh battery. Let's whip out Karate Kid 2. Gorgeous, gorgeous looking tape. Look at that. Absolutely lovely. The Karate Kid 2. See what it makes of uh, pre recorded. Oh, God. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Come on, baby. Hey. Yeah, so there's some stuff going on with the audio, stuff going on with the picture, but...
Each try action Karate Kid figure can chop this restored kid. And to help the Karate Kid master his art, there's a training center complete with attack alley where you come face to face with the enemy. Karate Kid 2, available for video rental. It stars now available for home. I can't believe I'm browsing around this tape um, with this machine. I honestly can't believe it. I also can't believe how much stuff is in front of this tape. <laughs> I really can't in front of this film. It's not the quickest of uh, fast forwards, but I mean, these machines weren't back in the day. They really weren't. Look at all this. Hey, the Karate Kid 2 certificate slide. Beautiful thing. PG. Columbia. So, I believe, as you can probably tell, the machine is actually getting a bit worse. It's losing sync with the monitor now, on a sort of consistent basis. I'd say that's the machine, not the tape. So, we may, may have had our glory with this little half-working one for now. Just due to the stretch belts or whatever. I, I mean, I'm into these you know, as a hobby, but I really, in terms of repairs and stuff, really don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it here. You can just about hear the absolutely gorgeous Karate Kid music. Um, we're going to rewind this, and I'm going to leave it there before I really uh, mess something up. I don't want to push it too far. But, guys, I can't express to you guys how pleased I am. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted that it works. I am flabbergasted and so, so happy. Um... I can't get over it. I just can't get over it. I was not expecting it to fire up at all. So, really happy about that. Bit slow on the old rewind, possibly. That's okay. Oh, man! Okay, we're gonna leave it there. Oh, God! And we got our tape back. <laughs> so that, that was really something. That was really, really something. Okay, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Um, folks, I know that I haven't uploaded in a long time. I know I've got a lot of projects on half. My story is always the same. Um, but what I can say is I had to show you guys this machine. I picked it up today. Absolutely just so chuffed. So, so, so chuffed. So thank you for checking out my video. Um, what I may do is uh, wait until I get a little bit of a quieter time. It's always crazy for me in the summer. And I'll probably send this away to get it serviced because if I don't, there's a few different things that could happen. Um, it was a legendary purchase for me, so it could just go up into the attic and live there forever and I do nothing with it. That would suck because it's a waste of a really nice machine. Um, I could sell it on eBay spares or repairs, but that would kind of just make me a middleman and I want a little bit more involvement with the machine. So what I'll probably do is send it away to get repaired. Um, get it repaired and pay for the repairs. Get it back, do a nice little demo video of it when I do get it back. And then either flog it on or keep it as an office machine. <laughs> How crazy does that sound? As if it's not bizarre enough in the year 2018 to have a Betamax machine in your living room as part of your setup next to the Xbox and what have you. Um, I've got one in the office as well. <laughs> but 
yeah, that would be pretty legendary. Um, it's just massive, that's the only thing, but I could always stick it up somewhere on a shelf or something. Have to be a pretty sturdy shelf. Anyway, I don't really know what I'm spouting. Um, I'm probably going to get it repaired. And uh, yes, if anyone's majorly curious, then I'll see what I can do about updating you guys in this uh, uh, about this machine in the future. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. And that will hopefully be finishing my network project.